Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now, it has been the best of times and the worst of times for your podcast host today because... And it's been the best of times because I've lost £15 in weight since January the 1st. So I feel that I'm finally getting somewhere after piling on the pounds last year. But hey, that's what you get when you make your living sat at a computer writing articles or talking to people recording podcasts. But it's also been the worst of times because the Adobe Summit joined the events on my event calendar, such as the Mobile World Congress that has been cancelled because of the coronavirus. And obviously it makes sense from a safety point of view, but I do really enjoy just getting out there and meeting you guys, the listeners to the show. So if you were planning on meeting me in Vegas at the Adobe Summit, I do apologise, but I'm sure I'll be back there soon. But a little bit of glimmer of hope, if you are in Chicago next week, I'm heading over there for the No Longer Virtual Conference. So let me know if you're in town. Now, one of the great things that I love about recording these episodes is every day I get to speak with interesting people from all over the world. And today, I'm genuinely excited to get Phil Strazula onto the podcast, who's a finance nerd turned entrepreneur. And they're his words, not mine. But Phil started investing in stock when he was just 12 years old but set his sights on starting a company after an internship at a two-person company during his time at college. It's a great story. I don't want to reveal too much now in the intro, so let me beam your ears all the way to Boston, and we'll get him on the show now. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Phil. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yeah, sure. And and thanks so much, Neil, for having me. My name is Phil Strazula. I'm the founder of Select Software Reviews, which is a website dedicated to helping HR buy the right technology tools. I started my career off working in venture capital, went to Harvard to get my MBA, taught myself how to program, always wanted to start a company, um, started a, a business that I bootstrapped to the point where I could hire somebody to run that. And then about a year ago, uh, had some extra time, had the startup itch, wanted to start something new. Now, when I was researching you before you came on the podcast today, I did see you were described as a finance nerd turned entrepreneur. I'm not sure if they were your words or not, but <laughs> can, can you share that story, which I believe began when you started investing in the stock market when you were just 12 years old? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, for whatever reason, I've always been interested in business uh, and specifically, I think the stock market, because I was sort of you know, 10, 11 in uh, like the 95 sort of time period when the first sort of tech bubble was just starting. I think that, you know, Netscape IPO, Amazon IPO, et cetera. Um, and I was, you know, mowing lawns and doing odd jobs to make money. And I was like, wait, if you just like buy a stock and it goes up 10%, like you could make like $100 <laughs> in a day. Like, that's crazy. Uh, you know, that seems like a much better way to make money than mowing lawns for 10 bucks a pop. And so my brother, who's a year younger than I, we convinced my mom over the course of probably like a year or two to eventually take us down to Fidelity and open up brokerage accounts, which I still have the same account open um, some like 20 something years later. And so I sort of like had that for whatever reason in my DNA and have always been a bit of a finance nerd. I still do a lot of investing. But when I was in college, I interned at a two person company and I just love the impact that I could have, the creativity and just sort of the agency. And so I sort of switched my desires to become an entrepreneur at some point and basically took a series of jobs after college to help prepare me to that end. And you also, you're also a self-taught programmer. And from there, you, you also started two bootstrap technology companies. So can you tell me a little bit about that and also what lessons you learned during that time? Yeah, so I, you know, had wanted to teach myself how to program for a while. I had sort of like started a couple of times and never really gotten that escape velocity to do it. 
And then I got really sick um, the summer between my first and second year of business school. I got strep throat, which usually isn't a big deal, but I'm somebody who never goes to the doctor. And so I just kind of assumed it would go away. And it just got really bad. Like it turns out strep can actually like kill people. Um, and so I was at a commission for about a week and I was uh, living in San Francisco because I was doing the summer internship and I didn't really have uh, much to do and not the energy to do it. And so I just started coding sort of in my spare time and finally, you know, sort of got that quote unquote escape velocity to be able to build stuff and, and just loved it. And so that rounded out a skill set that allowed me to start, as you point out, two bootstrapped companies. I didn't need to raise a couple million bucks to hire engineers to like build my first product and, and whatnot. I took a slower, um, sort of less risky, maybe in some ways, approach to doing this where I built the first MVP, then went into sales mode and, you know, reached out to companies and did demos and closed them and, you know, wrote the contract when they said, send over the contract. And I said, oh yeah, right away. And of course there is no contract. Um, so did all that stuff. And, and I think, you know, to your final part of the question, what did I learn? There's an amazing amount of lessons um, about business that you learn from building these companies and doing every single job within a company. Um, but I think the the sort of most interesting learnings for me are always about myself and maybe to a lesser extent, like how the world works. Um, and, and what I mean by that is you kind of figure out like, what are the things that make you super excited? What are the things you're really bad at? And you learn this because you fail, right? Like there's no sort of like middle management job that you can just get slotted into. Uh, and so for those people out there trying to contemplate if entrepreneurship is the right path for them, I think that the benefits, the economic benefits can be wonderful, but even just sort of like the personal growth benefits are amazing as well. Um, and, you know, the biggest thing is just learn about yourself. For anyone listening thinking, well, I'd like to teach myself how to be a programmer, what resources did you use? I mean, was this during the, when YouTube was available or was it before then? Um, it was it was post YouTube. I started out with this website, Code Academy, where you can take a couple of classes on just sort of the basics around different languages. And I knew that I wanted to to do web programming. And so I did like the basic HTML course, the basic CSS, JavaScript, Python. And all of a sudden I kind of knew how this stuff worked a little bit. And once you have a little bit of one-on-one knowledge, my biggest suggestion is just find a project that you're passionate about. And it has to be something you're passionate about because the brain damage is just too much otherwise to overcome it. And, and just start to build it. And piece by piece through thousands of Google searches and lots of research, and maybe you get a friend who can help you out, you're going to learn all the different building blocks that allow you to actually put a thing together. And then the next time you put a thing together, it's gonna to be a lot easier and you're gonna to continue to build on that knowledge base. Um, but to summarize, it's get the 101 and then figure out something that you care so much about that you're willing to burn the uh, midnight oil to get it done. And here in 2020, like you said a few moments ago, you are with Select Software, which my understanding is a site dedicated to providing in-depth and unbiased reviews of business software. But can you tell me a little bit more about the company and ultimately the kind of problems that you're solving for businesses? Yeah, sure. So my previous startup was in the HR technology space. We created the software to help companies market their business as a place to work, basically taking the best practices from sales and marketing, applying them to your recruiting. And what I found through that process is that it's really hard to buy the right business software and specifically HR and recruiting software. There are hundreds of vendors. There's lots of bias research on the internet that is designed to make you do things that you're not aware of or sell your data in ways that you're not aware of or whatever. And I just kind of saw this and I was like, man, you know, this kind of stinks. Like, I think I can really help practitioners in the recruiting and HR worlds to find and buy the right software through unbiased research. I'm not going to make as much money as these other companies because I'm not going to do all the sketchy stuff to sell your data and, and whatnot. Um, but I can make enough to, to have a living. And so I, I sort of started down this path of just like doing a lot of research, writing it up, creating some videos, et cetera. And that was probably about a year and a half ago. Um, the site has grown tremendously. 
and now hundreds of people um, sometimes an hour check it out, which is like really cool and, you know, send me notes and all that stuff. So I get the, all the joy and, and the positive feedback from an anecdotal as well as a data perspective from looking at Google Analytics. Um, but it's it's really all about trying to be like that trusted resource, sort of like wire cutter might be for consumer electronics or nerd wallet might be for credit cards and financial products. And for any startup founders that might be listening to us today, you have bootstrapped two companies that we like we mentioned a few moments ago. But what did you learn from those days? Was there anything that you would be able to pass on to any startup founders that are at the beginning of their journey, do you think? Yeah. So I, I think the first main question you have to ask yourself is, is, is bootstrapping the right path for you? I used to work in venture capital and I saw a couple of companies that use that rocket fuel to build multi-billion dollar businesses, which is amazing. And I saw a couple other companies that would have been amazing businesses, especially for the founders. Maybe they got to five or 10 million of revenue and they're worth 50 or more million, but they've raised a (laughs) hundred. And so (laughs) you're in this place where as a founder, you you spent seven years of your life on something and you're going to get zero dollars and your board is super upset. And you could have just gone a little bit slower and built something that would have created an amazing economic outcome for you and and probably would have been a lot more fun as well. Um, So I think that's step number one. And then step number two is getting as much traffic as possible with the least amount of resources, which probably sounds amazingly obvious. But if you have that as your North Star, when you do anything in the beginning, you're going to be a lot more successful. So, you know, don't take your $30,000 of savings and hire a developer. Figure out what are the key hypotheses to what you're doing working and then test those through a $10 landing page or whatever the case may be. Um, The other big piece of advice is that you need to be able to get as much traction as possible before you leave the other thing that you're doing to make an income. Um, I've got a friend who had a side project for five years, just sort of nights and weekends before he left his full-time job. It actually got up to a million dollars of revenue before he even left. And that was a great decision for him because if he would try to spend five years just sort of on the side or full-time working on it, it, it didn't work he would have been in a much worse situation and probably wouldn't have allowed him to put the resources in to get it to that next level. So I think those are sort of the key things are do as much as you can in terms of business hypothesis validation or invalidation, which is as useful. It can be a little disheartening, but it is very useful because it's going to save you time and money. And then also see if you can get traction, build an audience, build an email list, have a podcast that talks about the stuff you're going to sell, et cetera, so that you have traction, you have validation before you go and give up whatever you're doing right now. Excellent advice. And a quick look at your profile online, and it seems like you spent a hell of a lot of plates. So I've got to ask, what is the, is your secret to productivity? Mm-hmm. Is it essential tech tools or is, is there something else that uh, that is your secret to being able to spend so many plates? That's a good question. Uh, I think I've tried to craft a work-life integration that allows me to be happy, to make enough money to pay my rent, and to get a lot done. So I almost always work from home. I get up and I have a pretty structured morning routine where I make myself some breakfast as I wake up. And then really from like eight o'clock to 11, I don't do anything but work. I write down one thing that I'm grateful for and three things I want to get done. And then I get those three things done. And they're like painful things like taxes or sending out invoices or like (laughs) the things that you just like, you cringe as a business owner when you think about this stuff. And I don't check my email. I don't check my text messages. I don't do calls. It's just like deep work. And so if you do that for three hours every day, you can almost call it a day. Um, so that's like probably the biggest hack that I have. I've deleted everything off my phone that I want to check, you know, Instagram, Wall Street Journal, stocks, Google Analytics, whatever the case may be. So I'm not tempted to look at that. And the things that I waste time on throughout the day, like I used to wrestle, um, not like WWF professional (laughs) wrestling, but more like, you know, cutting weight sort of wrestling. 
And so like, you know, I check that, I check the stocks, I check my stock, my Wall Street Journal, but I only allow myself to do each of those things once a day for 10 minutes. And so I'm not like checking the news six times a day or, or anything like that, because those sorts of things actually add up. Speaking of cutting weight, you know, unfortunately, when I was in high school, I, I cut a lot of weight to, to compete in wrestling. And the main thing they tell you about dieting uh, that I think is good advice is the thing that kills you are the BLTs, the bites, licks, and tastes. Like those little things, you know, the bite of the cake, the lick of the ice cream, whatever, like those are the things that actually destroy your dieting. And I, and I think those BLTs, um, the analogous would be, you know, checking the news or whatever your uh, sort of, you know, vices, th those are the things that destroy your productivity. Um, so that working out every day, meditation, and um, just trying to have fun and, and do the stuff that I like to do, like cook and play golf and see my friends. And for people listening that are inspired by your journey and they want to start their own side hustle, can you offer any practical tips on starting and growing that side hustle? Because I think there's a bit of a misconception out there that people must suddenly leave their job on day one and then, then dive into this other other uh, side hustle. But it's not like that at all. I mean, I, I think I, I spent two years juggling uh, mm -hmm. what I do now with my day job before I left it behind. And I think that's a message that people miss. So is there any tips that you could uh, offer around that? Yeah, I think one is to realize it's going to take a lot of time and it's going to be full of ups and downs and you should enjoy the ups, something I'm pretty bad at, um, celebrate the wins and then also realize the downs are just part of the journey and, and don't get too discouraged. I would look for markets that already exist. Um, so what I mean by that is probably your side hustle is not going to create a new market like uh, like meatless hamburgers or something like that, although I guess that exists now too. Um, there, it's probably going to look at something that is already sort of a common consumer business behavior, and you're just going to have your take on it. And that's sort of my last piece of advice here is that you need to think about what makes you different? What are the things that you do that are unique, that are really good, that you think you could bring to the world? What's that thing that's super impactful? So, you know, when I think about, of course, this is a little bit of recency bias here, but what we just talked about, maybe for me, like the three hours in the morning that I have are incredible. And I find a way to productize that and bring it to other people out there, like I've actually thought about, should I build a Chrome extension that turns off your emails, your texts, your social media, doesn't allow you to go to the news, blah, blah, blah. Like maybe that would be a cool side hustle. Um, I've already got too many plates, <laughs> as you point out. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm not gonna probably pursue that anytime soon, but that's something that would resonate with me. And so what is it about you that's unique that you know better than anybody else that fits into a box that people are already sort of used to uh, that you can execute on and how do you start making progress on that while you still have your day job because as you point out Neil it's going to take a lot longer than you think there are very few overnight successes absolutely and if we were to look towards the future I mean what excites you around the future possibilities and op opportunities that we're going to be able to create through these emerging technologies that we're seeing more and more dominating our timelines these days yeah I, I think um, you know that Probably a lot of people would say this now, but the last like five or six years, I've probably been the most excited about self-driving cars. I've got a sibling who's disabled. I've got a couple grandmas who at this point can't drive. Um, I think it changes the lives for a lot of people in a really positive way. I think it'll recreate our cities and our lives um, and you know where people can live and, and all this stuff. And so... To me, like that's probably the, the thing that I'm the most excited about. Um, and then I think there's probably also this growing area of the economy, which you can see in Shopify's stock price, which is unbelievable how much that business has grown. But it's all these like kind of people who are having side hustles, uh, who are making a thousand to ten thousand dollars a month with some sort of like small business on the internet like I, I almost think of myself as like i'm like a shopkeeper and instead of having like a hardware store downtown i've got like this website where hr people can go and learn about software which is one of the more niche things <laughs> that you could probably <laughs> think about in the world 
Um, and it's just like, that's like my little business. And, and I think there's thousands and thousands of companies out there, millions that are um, continuing to grow at super rapid rates. And I think this will become more and more of a thing, especially as you see more regulations around Google, Facebook, Amazon. Um, I, I think the world is gonna become more and more splintered. Yeah, I completely agree with you on that. And as for select software, how's that going to continue to evolve as as we continue throughout 2020 and beyond? Is there anything that excites you about the road ahead for that? Yeah, you know, I'm just super motivated because there's so much going on in this recruiting and HR space. And these technologies influence the way that businesses operate, they influence the individual employees' lives. Um, you know, you think about the tools that help companies build a more diverse workplace and how that has transformational opportunities for huge segments of the population. You think about things like employee engagement tools that increase the culture quotient and make it so that hopefully you don't hate your job, right, where you spend so much of your life. Um, there's just like a lot going on there. And so for me, you know, once in a while I feel overwhelmed by this, but I'm just sort of like trying to dive in and learn as much as possible and then translate that learning into like actual actionable unbiased content that the people and HR and recruiting teams of the world can use to, uh, help their businesses and help their own personal lives and help the employees within those businesses. What a huge thank you for coming and joining me today, Phil, on the podcast. But before I do let you go, if anyone that wants to find out more details about Select Software or indeed contact you or your team, what's, what's the best way of doing that? Yeah, so uh, selectsoftwarereviews.com is our website. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, Phil Strazula. There's only like three of us in the whole world, so it'd be pretty easy to <laughs> figure out which one I am. And uh, yeah, I would love to connect with anybody out there who maybe is thinking about starting a business and has a couple questions. So you're the Phil Estrazula in the WWE outfit on your profile. That's right, isn't it? That's exactly right. Yeah, shirtless. <laughs> um, it's me versus The Rock. <laughs> well, I've absolutely loved having a conversation with you today. So much value to be gained from your story, like you say, with, that began when you was just 12 years old. But I think it's really... I hope that it will inspire somebody else that could be sat on a bus or a train somewhere into the office thinking, well, maybe I can teach myself to program. Maybe I can uh, create one of those online businesses and earn my own way. And because, like you say, it is getting incredibly splintered out there. And in, in a lot of ways, I think that's a great thing. So a big thank you for taking the time to come and share that with me today, Phil. Thanks for having me. What a great story. A self-taught programmer who started two bootstrap technology companies and now spends his time working on Select Software, a site dedicated to providing depth and unbiased reviews of business software. But I cannot thank him enough for sharing that story, as well as talking about those practical tips on starting and growing a side hustle, because I think they're invaluable to anybody that's stuck in a day job but wants to do something different, because a lot of people think that you've just got to jump straight in at the deep end and now thanks to technology you don't need to do that i think i was building my side hustle for 18 months two years before finally making the leap and it wasn't such a leap once i'd had everything in place and also for talking about bootstrapping all things productivity and being a self-taught coder so much value in there for me and a genuine thank you to a great guy for coming on here. But for anyone else, please share your thoughts by emailing me techblogwriter at outlook.com, Twitter and Instagram at Neil C. Hughes and LinkedIn as well. And you can also drop by my website techblogwriter.co.uk slash podcast if you want to browse through over 1,100 other interviews too. But I've taken up far too much time of yours already. But I will promise to return tomorrow with another guest. So a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.